So I'll be talking about um, a study of pembrolizumab in biomarker unselected patients with recurrent metastatic head and neck cancer. These are my disclosures. Briefly, head and neck cancer is the fifth most common cancer worldwide. And recurrent metastatic head and neck cancer has a very poor prognosis, very similar, for example, to lung cancer and other cancers where we have very few treatment options. Overall survival is on the order of uh, 13 months for recurrent metastatic disease. And especially in patients who have previously been treated, uh, so survival is even poorer with a median survival of only about six months, which actually is the majority of the patients in this study. What has been known for a little bit of time is that there's a very prominent immune escape phenotype uh, present in head and neck squamous cell tumors, uh, which led to the initiation uh, of the study. And the flavor of this is actually not very unlike what we see in melanoma or in lung cancer. So patients unselected for HPV status, uh, as well as the expression of a biomarker, were enrolled in the study. Um, I should mention that there's two flavors of head and neck cancer. It's really two diseases. There are the HPV positive ones, very similar to cervical cancer um, tumors that occur oftentimes in, in patients who have not much smoking or no smoking history. And then there are the non-HPV or smoking associated head and neck cancer. So this study enrolled both cohorts and both patient types. Importantly, Pembrolizumab was given at a flat dose, so one flat dose, uh, 200 milligrams every three weeks, uh, a very convenient dosing schedule. And patients were treated as long as they didn't um, uh, show progression of disease or as long as they had clinical improvement. These are the efficacy results by response rate. You heard already about response rate, shrinkage of the tumor. Um, one in four patients, 24.8% of patients responded, so showed substantial uh, tumor shrinkage. When you look at the different flavors of head and neck cancer, in the HPV positive ones, it was about 20%, and in the HPV negative ones, it was 27%. So this drug is active in both entities. In addition to 25% uh, response rate, about 25% of patients also had stable disease. So we call that, when we take this together, uh, disease control rate of about 50%, which is remarkable in this disease, especially in a heavily pretreated population. About two-thirds of patients had received two or more prior lines of therapy, um, generally an indicator of a very, very poor prognosis population. This is what we call a waterfall plot. Each bar indicates one patient. You can see on the y-axis the changes in uh, tumor size, uh, growth on the left going upwards, or shrinkage going downwards. And you can see highlighted in green the HPV negative tumors, so each bar is one patient, and in uh, an orange the HPV positive patients. You can see the majority of patients had benefit in the form of shrinkage. 56% of patients showed a decrease in the size of their tumor lesions. This is another way of looking at the data. When we look at patients who actually did benefit, who did have a response, we see that the responses occurred oftentimes early at eight weeks or 16 weeks, although there are a few outliers of patients who had late responses. Importantly, those patients that did respond oftentimes continue to have uh, uh, responses. We call those durable responses. 86% of patients seem to have durable responses in this cohort. Also, I would like to point out that not only the patients who responded continue on therapy, also many patients uh, who had stable disease continue on therapy. So a total of 40 patients are currently still receiving treatment with pembrolizumab. Talking about side effects, overall, similar to uh, what we already know about pembrolizumab, this was a very well-tolerated agent, certainly better tolerated um, than what we usually use in head and neck cancer with aggressive chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Um, the most common side effect of any of the side effects occurring more than 5% of the time was fatigue. Um, generally a very well tolerated agent. However, a few patients did have more severe side effects. We had two patients with pneumonitis, uh, grade three, and one patient with grade three uh, colitis. Finally, I would also like to point out that Biomarker testing, as was mentioned before, may be important. We currently don't have data uh, on pd l one uh, status on these patients, and that's ongoing. However, if you put this into the perspective of treatment for head and neck cancer, our best approved uh, therapy is, a targeted therapy, is cetuximab with a response rate of 10 to 13 percent. This is twice as good as our best targeted therapy currently in this early preliminary 
uh, uh, report, and we certainly are waiting, looking forward to um, validation. Furthermore, I would like to point out that there are new biomarkers emerging, and there's another related abstract, also in head and neck cancer, um, that is shown here. It's a gene uh, signature, which has a very um, strong negative predictive value, meaning it predicts which patient will not respond, and in the future may help us, if validated, which patient we should or should not use agents like pembrolizumab uh, uh, for. So with that, I would like to summarize. This is by far the largest experience of immunotherapy in head and neck cancer. 132 patients were treated. 56% of patients experienced a decrease uh, in their target lesions for a response rate of 25%. One in four patients had a response. This is twice as good as our best target therapy currently. It seems that this treatment is broadly active in both HPV positive and HPV negative tumors, and in particular, remains active in heavily pretreated patients. Um, in addition, these respons responses are durable, something that we've never seen before in head and neck cancer. And I also would like to briefly point out, this was a convenient dosing schedule of 200 milligrams every three weeks, and we may have uh, possible novel biomarkers in the future that will help us predict who, which patients to use this therapy in. Thank you.